It used to be said that the sun never sets on the British Empire, but could the British monarchy be facing its own kind of twilight? A lot of attention in the United States and around the world has been focused on the UK recently, following the death of Queen Elizabeth II and the ascension of King Charles III to the throne. But there are a lot of questions facing the new monarch. One is to do with Britain's role in the world, another is to do with a grappling with its colonial history, and a third is the nature of hereditary monarchy itself. As far as Britain's role in the world is concerned, the big issue recently has been Brexit, its exit from the European Union. To its advocates, this has boosted British independence and identity. But to its critics, of whom there are many, it has created chaos and risks relegating the nation to a kind of second-tier status around the world. In addition, the UK itself is pretty disunited these days. Scotland could well have another referendum on independence next year. And in Northern Ireland, Sinn Féin is now the largest party. Sinn Féin is an Irish nationalist party that has as its ultimate goal removing Northern Ireland from the UK and forming a united Ireland. The questions about British colonialism have sharpened also in recent years particularly as the Black Lives Matter movement began in the US, but spread further afield. There have been protests, including some targeting members of the royal family, seeking apologies for Britain's behavior while it was an imperial power. That history involves considerable brutality all around the world and a pillaging of goods from Britain's then colonies. As for the nature of the monarchy itself, it's curious in some ways that the United States has such reverence for the institution. This country, after all, fought a war to dispose of the notion that some people can be born to reign over others. So we put it all together and there are a lot of complexities and we see these details being thrown up all the time. Barbados, for example, removed the then queen as its head of state late last year, presumably believing that the idea of its citizens being subject to the crown were simply anachronistic. As Charles grapples with these issues, he doesn't have the same reservoir of goodwill to draw on as his mother had. Partly that's to do with the fact that he's seen as a somewhat more political figure, having voiced his opinions on everything from architecture to climate change. It's also because his mother was around for so long that she became a part of the cultural landscape. She had met every American president bar one since Harry Truman, and had been served by 15 British Prime Ministers. But Charles also has more specific challenges. His own life has had its checkered moments, none more famous than his troubled marriage to the late Princess Diana. In addition, the family itself has had other controversies, notably Prince Andrew's friendship with Jeffrey Epstein and the ongoing controversy about the rest of the family's treatment of Meghan Markle. The British monarchy has a lot of strengths to draw on, including the sheer length of its history and the view of some that it is a major asset for the nation. But as Charles comes to the throne, he's facing questions that are more stark than ever before. <laughs>